Welcome back to a special edition of the Live in La Vida Low Carb Show with Jimmy Moore. And today I wanted to bring to you uh, some results of a brand new study that just came out on April the 20th, 2011. And uh, the study was called Reversal of Diabetic uh, Nephropathy by a Ketogenic Diet. And today we have one of the investigators on that study. His name is Dr. Charles V. Mobs. He is from the Fishberg Center for Neurobiology at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York. And he's going to tell us about this really exciting study that was published, uh, what was it, in the journal Plus One? Is that right? That's right. And so he's going to tell us a little more about why they decided to do this study, uh, what the study was all about, and what they found in the study. So, Dr. Mobs, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us a little more about why you chose to look at the ketogenic diet, and tell us what diabetic nephropathy is for those who aren't familiar with that medical term. All right, so uh, how we got into studying the ketogenic diet is as follows. Uh, actually, my research program for the last 20 years has been oriented toward understanding a slightly different subject, which is how does dietary restriction slow down the aging process? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a very robust phenomenon you probably know. Uh, and so basically, kind of a major goal that I have had is to develop a pharmacological way to mimic this protective effect of dietary restriction. I don't really recommend dietary restriction, but we would like to understand how it works so that we can get a drug maybe that can mimic those protective effects, which, which protects against all, all the age-related diseases and actually increases lifespan. So for a long time, uh, for about 20 years, uh, my hypothesis has been that uh, dietary restriction slows down the aging process by reducing glucose metabolism. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons why I propose that, but it's, let's just say at the moment it's, uh, it's still a hypothesis. Uh, but it's certainly one reason that I studied, uh, that, I, that I focused on glucose metabolism, is that it's, it's virtually certain that diabetic complications are caused by too much glucose metabolism. So if we could at least un understand how to reduce glucose metabolism in that context, that at least would be a major uh, accomplishment. So for a long time, I've been using diabetes as a kind of a, an accelerated form of aging, you might say. Mm -hmm. So um, now I'm a basic researcher, so one of the things that we've tried to understand over the years is how does glucose do what it does uh, in the cell? And so we, and there are specialized cells in particular we're interested in that actually sense glucose kind of as a signal. Uh, to, to maintain glucose levels at the appropriate level. So, for example, the, beta, the pancreatic beta cell senses glucose and secretes insulin accordingly, and there are cells in the brain that also sense glucose. And so we've been studying how do those cells sense glucose. And in the course of those studies, we um, actually somewhat accidentally uh, discovered that ketones block glucose metabolism and, mo and the molecular effects of glucose, in, at least in those cells. That was quite a big surprise for us, but it turned out to be very useful for the kinds of studies we were doing. But anyway, uh, that was in, in terms of basic research, but then um, it suggested to me that uh, that might be exactly the kind of uh, effect we've been uh, looking for in terms of an intervention that uh, would uh, reduce glucose metabolism, uh, both in diabetes and aging. Mm -hmm. So... Um, we had actually been studying the ketogenic diet uh, for other reasons, uh, having to do with weight loss, uh, be, and that's kind of a different story, but, but we'd had a lot of experience with the ketogenic diet and knew that it was uh, actually had some very remarkable metabolic properties. So uh, we decided to assess if according, which is according to my hypothesis, that, uh, that it would Re, that it actually would reverse diabetic complications. Now, the, the key point there is that diabetic complications and aging are both characterized by relatively progressive uh, pathological processes which appear to be largely irreversible. Mm -hmm. And this has been a big uh, mystery in the field of diabetes. Why is it that even if you get very good glucose control, even if you get a beta cell transplant, for example, you still don't reverse the complications? So this is something that's called in the clinical world uh, metabolic memory. And uh, 
let's just say, to make a long story short, I had developed a theory to explain metabolic memory. And according to my theory, uh, if we could reduce glucose metabolism sufficiently, we could actually re reset and reverse the complications. So uh, that, that's what we set out to see if I was right about that. So um, we, uh, and, and the key point there is that we wanted to show in mice that had already developed the, the pathology, uh, having demonstrated that they had the pathology, then when we put them on a ketogenic diet, that would actually reverse the pathology. So that's actually why we studied nephropathy, which is kidney damage, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's actually very easy to monitor that by just measuring the protein in the urine, which we could do you know, in a uh, chronic way. So uh, that's what we did. And uh, Actually, when I first suge suggested doing this to my fellow, my endocrine fellow, uh, she actually thought I was out of my mind <laughs> because, uh, of course, di type 1 diabetes and, and type 2 diabetes as well, but especially type 1 diabetes is characterized by something called ketoacidosis. Right. And that's actually what kills diabetic patients, uh, at least acutely, uh, because their pH, the pH in their blood becomes too acidic. Uh, and so she thought that very likely a ketogenic diet would just make that worse. Uh, but I pointed out to her that when the liver makes ketones from a high-fat diet, it's a very different process from when it makes it from too much glucose. And so she said, okay, let's try it. And so we, we waited until the mice got uh, very diabetic. Uh, and then these are genetic, these are mice that are genetically predisposed to diabetes. And, uh, so she said, okay, let's, uh, let's put them on the diet. And so she put them on the diet, and the next day she came in ex fully expecting these mice to be dead. Uh, but actually, they were all very healthy, and uh, they got healthier and healthier, actually, the longer they were on the diet. In fact, their blood glucose fell overnight uh, from 500 milligrams per deciliter, which is kind of off the charts, mm -hmm. to 400 overnight. And by a week, their blood glucose levels were absolutely normal. But... Wow. So, so that was that was unexpected, actually, uh, because um, you know they they still really had very little insulin, but but the ketogenic diet had a tremendous effect to reduce their blood glucose. But the really key thing wasn't reducing the blood glucose, because we know that even if we do that, the complications won't reverse, but rather that the ketones also will block glucose metabolism. That at least was a theory. And sure enough, uh, we in in uh, in a separate set of mice, we waited until they got. Uh, diabetic uh, nephropathy, so they had high protein in the urine, which you shouldn't have. Uh, and then we put them on the uh, ketogenic diet, and uh, their blood glucose, of course, reduced, and then their protein started coming down, too, in the urine. In the meantime, the control mice, so in other words, the diabetic control mice that are on regular diet, started dying off. So uh, we actually found that the ketogenic diet not only reversed the nephropathy, but actually kept the mice alive and, uh, and, and relatively healthy. Yeah. So, so then, uh, and, we, and we did this also in a model of type 1 diabetes, that's insulin deficiency, and also in a model of type 2 diabetes, which is far more common in people. Uh, and in both those models, the mice got nephropathy, and in both cases, we completely reversed the nephropathy as indicated by protein in the urine. And we also, in the course of this study, developed a lot of new markers for uh, diabetic nephropathy based on a new technique that we had developed. And uh, all of those markers, which are uh, expression of specific genes, were all reversed by the ketogenic diet. So uh, it was very effective. I, I think I, I, well, I don't know if I should say, I guess I can say this. Uh, we also have done the same thing in age-related nephropathy, but uh, we haven't published that yet. Right. Well, we'll be looking for that soon. So. <laughs> I hope. So, Dr. Mobs, tell us what a ketogenic uh, diet is, how it's different from just a generic, say, Atkins-style low-carb right. diet. What is it that makes it a ketogenic diet? That's a really great question. Um, so, the, uh, I, well, I, the, the simple answer is protein. The, the Atkins diet it, the, the carbohydrates are actually the same between the Atkins diet and the ketogenic diet. What's different is that the Atkins diet is relatively high in protein, about 20%, uh -huh. and the ketogenic diet is more like 8% protein, gotcha. which uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but the reason that's important, because I hadn't, we had noticed this already earlier, that if we put mice on what, what would be the equivalent of the Atkins diet, 20% protein, th that's actually not ketogenic. 
In other words, the ketone levels don't rise in the blood. And uh, I was very surprised about that. Actually, we, we even put those mice down to essentially uh, virtually a zero-carbohydrate diet. But as long as they had 20% 20, 20 protein, they still did not get ketogenic. Uh, and the reason for that is that protein, that 20% is way more than adults need. Adults need maybe 8% at most and uh, protein in their diet. And so uh, that extra protein is actually converted to glucose. Gluconeogenesis. Because, you know, you're, pardon me? Gluconeogenesis. That's right, gluconeogenesis, exactly. Uh, and so, um, I, I mean, I was surprised, but, you know, the, the body has its own wisdom, right? And, and it really does not want glucose to get too low because the brain needs glucose. So, um, so that's why the, the Atkins diet is not generally ketogenic. It's somewhat ketogenic. It depends on the circumstances, and I think probably in some people the Atkins diet is ketogenic. But, uh, but actually, I, I went on the Atkins diet, and it was not ketogenic for me. But I think for other people it might be. Uh, so it just probably depends on how much gluconeogenesis that person um, does, you know, su supports. Um, we found in mice that, uh, for example, if if we did surgery on the mice and they were on the you know the equivalent of the Atkins diet, then they did show higher ketosis. So it just probably depends on the circumstances. Uh, probably caloric restriction on top of the Atkins diet, you know, is more ketogenic. But in any case, the kind of standard ketogenic diet, the one that's really robustly produces ketones, is much lower in protein, and that's the one that's used in people to treat epilepsy. So 5% carbohydrate, 8% protein. So you're saying that the diet that makes it ketogenic is 87% fat. Now, there's going right. to be some people whose eyes will bug out at that, <laughs> Dr. Yep. Mobs. And I, I know the LA Times, they had this headline that said, high-fat diet is awful, but it may yep. reverse diabetes-related kidney damage. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm kinda, I, I have to say I'm... I'm kind of annoyed at uh, the way this is being handled in the press. I mean, the emphasizing the high-fat diet. I mean, I get. I mean, it's certainly true. It is a high-fat diet, uh, but that isn't exactly the point. The point is that it's low carbohydrate. Uh, but whatever, well, you know. I mean, you can't a, have one without the other. So it's a therapeutic measure. It's not like you're saying this is the way these people need to necessarily eat the rest of their lives. Well, it's that's a right. Therapeutic measure for epilepsy, or in this case, for the uh, diabetes-related kidney damage, you know, th this is something that would be need to be done just like somebody going on uh, dialysis, for example, or having right. a, a chemotherapy for cancer. You know, this is the a, a therapy treatment in the same realm. That's absolutely uh, correct, and part of the uh, part of my theory, uh, the part of the model that we've developed, and it's based on, a, as you can imagine, a lot of science, is that. Um, According to, according to our model, um, just a, a temporary exposure to this diet will reset the molecular clock, so to speak, reset the chromatin state, so that it's very much like you just said, something like dialysis or chemotherapy, that, that only a transient exposure to the diet uh, we think will, will reset the clock, and therefore it do, you don't have to stay on the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, this is something we still have to demonstrate, however, uh, but, but that's the plan, yeah.